Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas everybody! Today is the day I am finally sharing my entire perfume collection and it will also be the first time I've really sat down and counted all of my full-size bottles. Any guesses? So as you can see, we've had to make some arrangements. I have all of my perfumes laid out here on display on my vanity, but usually I store them over here in the corner on a bar cart. And I'm going to take this video as the perfect opportunity to reorganize everything. I need to free up some space. Right now they are organized visually, so I like to keep all of my brands together. I have all of my Chanel's, all of my Tom Ford's, all of the Parfum de Marly's. It would make a lot more sense if I organized them by olfactive category since that is truly how I decide what fragrance I'm going to wear for that day. It depends on my mood, the feeling. Sometimes it's influenced by what I'm wearing, the outfit, of course the occasion, what I'm going to be doing for the day. So we'll see what happens. I'm trying to keep an open mind. Chances are high I will probably continue to organize them by brand because I don't think my brain will let me do any other way. It would just look too chaotic. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin with my collection of travel sprays and roller balls. This collection grew significantly this year. In fact, I think I picked up most of these in 2020 because prior to this year, I never really invested in travel sizes. It's just not typically the economical option, except now my collection has grown so much that it is the better buy because at least I will go through it. So here I have nine travel sprays and roller balls. This is Juliet Has a Gun. Mmm, I love this fragrance. Perfect for fall, winter. It's very sexy. This is not something that I would have probably purchased in the full size, but I love the idea of the spray. And it has such a fine mist as well. It's really beautiful. This is Sun Saint. I picked this up earlier this year. Completely fell in love. I also have the Shimmer Mist, which I'm not including ancillaries in today's video, but this scent is amazing. They also have a candle. It's coconut, lime, but it smells like vacation. Every time I spray this fragrance, it just transports me to the beach. It makes me instantly feel relaxed. Here I have Chloe Nomad. Love Chloe Nomad. This is one of my favorites. Spicy, interesting, sort of mysterious and seductive. That is a perfect fall fragrance. Then I have Maison Louis Marie. This is the number four Bois de Balancourt. This was sent to me complimentary in a Sephora package. Halfway done already. It's really beautiful. So unexpected. Not something that I probably would have purchased for myself. And yet I, I love it. It's really nice. Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. This is another one of my favorites. Ugh. Now this I can absolutely see picking up in a full-size bottle eventually. I have to go through some of these before I purchase in any more full sizes, at least for a typical floral. If there's something really special, I'm going to buy it full size, I don't care, but I don't want to stockpile so many floral fragrances because then they'll just go to waste. This is Heretic Dirty Mango. This was also sent to me complimentary from Sephora, a brand I'd never heard before. I think they are a clean at Sephora brand. These fragrances are all so interesting. They change so much during the life of the fragrance. You truly have to wear it on your skin and test it out for a few hours before you make your final decision. Dirty Mango is really beautiful. I kind of instantly fell in love with that one, but Dirty Lemon by Heretic this one I thought I hated. The initial spray, I just thought it wasn't for me. It was so citrusy, almost like lemon cleaner kitchen cleanser. But once it dries down, it is so beautiful and so sophisticated. It's a really elegant fragrance. Here I have Replica Beach Walk. This is another perfect daytime summer fragrance. It just takes you to the beach. It truly does smell like a beach walk. Very relaxing, beautiful for every day, and it's always so light. You never have to worry about spraying too much, so I love that one. And then the last travel size I have is Burberry Her Eau de Parfum. Love, love this fragrance. So sweet and sexy. It's often said to be a dupe for Baccarat Rouge 540, and I think that is sort of true, but now that I own both of them, when I wear them both and they dry down, they are very different fragrances. I think it's just initially, they smell sort of similar. It has that sweet cotton candy note right at the top. Both of them are incredibly beautiful, but Burberry Her 
is a far less expensive option if you do really like Baccarat Rouge 540 and you don't want to shell out the price tag. Now we're into the full-size bottles and I'm going to start with my current Chanel fragrance collection. I'm just going to talk about each of these sort of rapid fire because we have so many fragrances to go through, but I will link my fragrance playlist down below in case you'd like to see a more detailed review. Starting with Coco Noir. This is one of my favorite Chanel fragrances, but also just one of my favorite fragrances in general. It is so sexy. Tonka bean, patchouli, it has vanilla. The dry down is exquisite. So chic and sophisticated. I love this for date night. It's the perfect fall winter fragrance and I will always have a bottle of Coco Noir in my collection. Cannot be without it. Followed by Gardenia. This was my wedding day fragrance, so I have the True Parfum interpretation. So classic, so perfect. It's simple and beautiful. It truly does smell like a bouquet of fresh Gardenia. If you love white flowers and you like clean floral fragrances, I think you will love this. Really nice. Then we have Gabrielle. This is the original. And I prefer the essence. Here we have Paris Finisse, one of my all-time favorite Chanel fragrances. This is very light, another great daytime scent. This also has vanilla and tonka bean, but unlike Coco Noir, this is light and fresh. Next, I have the new Coco Mademoiselle Low Privé. This is the bedtime perfume. So nice. I didn't realize I needed this until they launched it, and it's beautiful. It's an even lighter interpretation of Coco Mademoiselle. Mm. Just really nice, perfect for right before bed to complete your evening ritual. I also have number five low from when this first launched several years ago. And I remember there was so much buzz and hype because it was meant to be the modern interpretation of Chanel number no. five, which is of course so classic, but doesn't really have modern appeal. And I think they did an incredible job. I like wearing this fragrance. I don't grab it very often, but when I do, I'm always very surprised and happy. At first, it's just a light number five, but the dry down is where you can really detect the change. I know they added cedar. They made a few minor tweaks, which they hadn't previously done. I love this one. Here I have Chanel Beige. This is my only other exclusive fragrance. So bright and happy. So happy I finally picked this up. Mm. Beautiful. It's a fresh floral, perfect for spring, summer, daytime. This could be a summer wedding fragrance. It's that special. I also have the Coco Eau de Toilette. I love the original Coco. I had a bottle of Coco a couple years ago, but I dropped it and it shattered into a million pieces. It was so sad. But I do have the Eau de Toilette lighter version. It's a little less spicy, but I think it's more wearable for Miami. And then the last current Chanel fragrance in my collection is Coco Mademoiselle, the Eau de Parfum. Had to have it. It is just the new classic. I think Coco Mademoiselle is now what Chanel number no. five used to be. Coco Mademoiselle is the homecoming queen. Everybody loves Coco Mademoiselle. I don't think I have ever met a single person that didn't like this fragrance. You might not love it. You might not want to wear it every day. Maybe it's not going to be your go-to, but the only complaint I've ever heard is that, oh, I don't want that because everybody wears that. Well, everybody wears it because it smells really good. Next, I'm going to walk you through all of my Tom Ford fragrances, starting with the newest edition. This is Lost Cherry. I think this is my favorite Tom Ford fragrance for women. It is so sexy, so beautiful. It smells like cherry almond, dries down very vanilla. It's a special occasion fragrance. It is the perfect, cozy, sensual, Fall winter fragrance. I just love it and I feel so lucky I was able to pick this up in the set because they very rarely do a value, but I was able to get my hands on the 1.7 ounce, right? Yes, 1.7 ounce and it also came with a little travel atomizer, which will be nice. It will certainly come in handy when we can travel again. I also have Rose Prick, which I picked up earlier this year. I believe it launched around Valentine's Day, which was perfect timing even though it's more of a fall winter fragrance. It's a little bit spicy, a lot of incense. The rose is really nice as well because it's not a classic in your face garden rose. It's a really sexy rose fragrance. 
You can never go wrong with a classic. Here I have Tom Ford Black Orchid, which was the first fragrance launched by Tom Ford. So sexy, opulent, in your face. People will smell you the moment you walk into the room. This is a special occasion fragrance. And my last Tom Ford fragrance is Metalique. This is a very interesting fragrance. It's a bit polarizing. Some people either love it or they hate it. I really love it. It reminds me of a fresh winter morning. It's just really light and it's very light on the skin. It's more of a personal skin scent. It's an aldehyde fragrance, so there's something very airy about it. Once the aldehydes sort of dissipate, the bergamot starts to disappear, you're left with sandalwood, balsam, vanilla in the base. It's really nice. Here I have my entire Parfum de Marly collection. It's pretty big, nine fragrances total. Earlier in the year, they were very kind and generous. They reached out and they offered to send me anything that I didn't already have in my collection. So I did not purchase all of these myself, but it's nice to have them on hand. That way I can use them to compare and contrast against other fragrances. Or if I just want to reference the fragrance, I have the bottle to show you guys. It is so hard to choose a favorite. I guess if I had to, Delina would be my number one favorite women's fragrance from Parfum de Marly. It's become a classic. It is so feminine, sophisticated, slightly sweet. I always say this would be a perfect wedding day fragrance. It has rhubarb, leashy, so it's a little bit sweet right off the top. A heart of rose, which is so sophisticated. And there's some spiciness in the base. So it's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, perfect for day or night. I think this would be a great signature scent. It's just really special. So I love the original Delina. I also really love Darcy. This is a bit more sophisticated, a little bit more serious, but so beautiful. It's just intoxicating. It's almost a sexier, seductive version of Coco Mademoiselle. Really beautiful. And then I also really love Athalia. This is another great, sexy date night type of fragrance. Perfect for fall, winter. And then Castly. This is more of a spring, summer scent. And I was wearing this every day at one point over the summer and it just stays so long. This has great lasting power because I would spray it on in the morning and then later on in the day just running errands, you know, going about my business, I could still smell it going strong and it was just that extra little boost, that little pick-me-up. And the last fragrance I'm going to mention is a relatively new addition to my collection and it is technically considered to be one of the men's fragrances. I've said it a million times, I don't really like unisex fragrances. I don't want to smell like a man. I like really sweet, floral, feminine fragrances, but Ojan is so special. I can absolutely see this going either way, but I think on a woman, it's a very sexy, powerful fragrance. So nice. It has honey, vanilla. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit gourmand very warm and cozy, the perfect sexy fall winter fragrance. One of my all-time favorite fragrances, most complimented, most long-lasting, just best of the best, is Maison Francis Kirgian Baccarat Rouge 540. It's in a league of its own. It truly is. It is so addictive. That is truly the best way to describe this fragrance. Every time I wear this, somebody pays me a compliment, asks me what I'm wearing. I just think it is so interesting, so dynamic. It just captivates you and you want to keep smelling it and keep smelling it. Within the house of Maison Francis Kirgian, my second favorite fragrance is Gentle Fluidity Gold. This is such a yummy, delicious, feminine, classic fragrance. I cannot believe I did not mention this in my top 10 fragrances for life video. And it was one of the ones I thought to myself, this list doesn't make sense. This list is null because you don't have gentle fluidity gold. It's just so difficult to narrow down favorites, but this is another one of my most used fragrances. I have a couple large travel sprays that I go through instead of using the bottle because the bottle was signed by Francis Kirgian himself. So I kind of want to keep it as full as possible. Mm, but it just smells like you're walking into the most chic, sophisticated bakery on earth in the middle of Paris. So now I'm going to take you through my Dolce & Gabbana fragrances, starting with the one. This is such a classic. It has been around for such a long time. And yet in my mind, this is so modern, so sexy. This is 
powerful, CEO, rich, chic woman. When I envision the woman who wears this fragrance, she is so put together head to toe, the perfect outfit, hair, sunglasses, bag. She has it all together. It just screams luxury to me. The bottle, the scent itself, I absolutely love wearing this fragrance. And this is another one of those scents that I find it to be so addictive. When I spray this, when I wear it, I can't stop smelling myself. It is just so beautiful. Number one is more of an evening special occasion. It could be daytime as well. But when I think of the perfect daytime fragrance from DNG, it would be number three, Limperatrice. This is a fruity floral. It smells like watermelon and kiwi. It's like a fancy fruit salad. <laughs> it's really nice, especially for spring and summer. Mmm, so beautiful. Another fruity floral from Dolce & Gabbana is Shine. I love this fragrance. This launched earlier this year as well. It's so bright and happy. Mmm, floral, fruity, but really smooth. I think this is very sophisticated. I hate this bottle. Hate it. The flower, the bright color. Nothing about this says luxury, but I love the fragrance so much I didn't even care. I went ahead and purchased. Another one of my all-time favorite fragrances is Creed Aventus for her. I love this fragrance anytime. It is so interesting and unlike fragrances I'm typically drawn to, but it's so good. This is another really addicting fragrance. I cannot stop smelling it on myself. And I think it's because it is the perfect feminine interpretation of the men's clone Aventus, which is so sexy on a man. I actually have Aventus for my husband. He loves it. I love every time he wears that. And this gives me that same feeling. I feel like I am the sexy man. It smells so good. Here is the most recent perfume I added to my collection and I had no intention of picking up such a large fragrance, but this was the only size it was available, of course. It is Mon Guerlain Intense. I don't really mind because I love the fragrance so much. I'm going to wear this for years to come. What inspired me to finally purchase was because I had worn a couple samples on a trip with my husband earlier this year and he just couldn't get enough. He kept commenting, you smell so amazing, that smells so good. I took a mental note and I waited until Sephora had bonus points and I went ahead and purchased. I wore this just the other day, it's so good. Ugh. This is amazing. Such a sexy fragrance, really beautiful. I like the original Mon Guerlain, but the Mon Guerlain Intense is just next level. If I had to choose the most interesting fragrance that I added to my collection this year, it would have to be the new Christian Louboutin Luby World Luby Rouge. I love this fragrance. It is again so sexy, perfect for fall winter. I picked up a lot of those types of fragrances. That's typically what I'm drawn to. But this one stands out from the rest because there's just something else about it. It almost smells leathery at first, and then the dry down is very feminine, but it just transports you to a cabaret in Paris. And that was the inspiration behind the fragrance. And they did such a perfect job. It is unlike anything else I have ever smelled, and it is so difficult to compare it to anything else. It's just sexy date night in a bottle. That is the best way to describe it. My camera battery died and I still have 26 fragrances to get through. So while we wait for that to charge, I figured I might as well just pick up my vlog camera and keep it going. Hopefully you don't mind the switch. It's very important to me that we finish this video because that is the point. This is my entire fragrance collection. So I have two Dior fragrances. I'm going to show you my most recent edition first. This is Amber Nuit. It's one of the Maison Dior fragrances. It is like fall in a bottle, a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. It's very similar to the new Angel Share by Killian. I finally had the opportunity to smell that couple weeks ago. I love that fragrance. I think that will be the next fragrance I add to my collection, but it does smell sort of similar to Amber Nuit. When I compare the two head to head, the Amber Nuit has a little bit more of a powdery finish. Both of them are absolutely beautiful. I never get sick of this. I could wear this every single day during fall winter. Also from Dior, I have Hypnotic Poison, the classic. This is such a sexy, addictive fragrance. I don't wear this all the time, although I am starting to go through it, but I think for date night, this is perfect. 
I have two Gucci fragrances in my current collection, Gucci Bloom and Gucci Rush. I love Gucci Rush. I first discovered this fragrance in high school. All of the cool girls at my high school wore Gucci Rush, so of course I wanted to wear it as well. But the fragrance is so unique. I think there's something that's still very modern about it. It's definitely a classic. I'm so happy you can still find this. There was a period of time that it kind of disappeared and you couldn't really find it anymore. But I picked this up earlier this year at Sephora, so you can still get your hands on it. And then Gucci Bloom is such a soft, smooth floral. I think this is perfect for weddings, brunch. Mmm. It's just a light white floral fragrance. If you like tuberose, gardenia, I think you'll really like Gucci Bloom. Next, I'm going to share three of my favorite new additions to my collection this year, starting with Giorgio Armani My Way. I love this fragrance. It is so soft and sweet. You get a lot of vanilla in the base, but a lot of citrus right off the top. So it's really fun and vibrant, but then it dries down and it's very smooth and sophisticated. Another new discovery this year was Ocean de Joa by Giorgio Armani. This is so fresh and light, but it's not floral. Unlike My Way, this is very aquatic, which I think this is the only aquatic fragrance in my collection. So it's not something that I would typically be drawn to, and I don't think I would have ever discovered this had I not discovered it in the little Sephora perfume sampler set. And the third new addition this year is Valentino Voce Viva. This is another new fragrance. I think the bottle is very beautiful. It reminded me of Baccarat Rouge 540. They're very similar. Similar shape, red detail. But this bottle has little cutouts on the side, so it looks like little rock studs. I think it is very on brand. You have the little rock studs here. It's a little bit like my way in that it is very beautiful and I could see myself wearing this on a daily basis. But is it going to really stand out among all fragrances, including niche fragrances? Probably not. In fact, it smells very similar to Donna from Valentino. And I think somebody mentioned to me that it reminded them of another Valentino fragrance. So it certainly has the Valentino DNA, but it's very light and sensual. The only other Valentino fragrance I have in my collection is the Valentina Pink. And I don't even think you can purchase this anymore. I don't think so. I remember talking about it in a video and when I went to search for it, they said no. <laughs> so it's just fun. It's kind of bright, fruity, very sexy. I think for a date night out, if we were having a date night on South Beach or if I was going out for a girl's night out, this would be a perfect fragrance to wear. Another perfect date night fragrance is Carolina Herrera Good Girl. I love this scent. It is so sexy, perfect for evening. And I do really like the stiletto shoe bottle. This is my exception to the wild bottle rule. Usually I like very clean, classic, simple bottles. Something like this. Beige from Chanel. At this point, I can't really smell anything because I've sprayed so many fragrances, but it is really beautiful. I think it is perfect for evening. Another great fall, winter, cozy on the couch type of fragrance. This next fragrance is another great party, going out, wild night on the town type of scent. It's the Black Opium Neon from YSL. And it's crazy to me, looking at all of my fragrances, that this is the only YSL fragrance I currently have in my collection. I really want to check out their Elevated fragrance line. I've heard Tuxedo is really nice. If you're familiar with the Elevated YSL fragrances, let me know if you have a favorite down below. It's very fun and flirty, very youthful. It doesn't smell incredibly elegant, sophisticated, doesn't smell luxurious, but not every occasion calls for that type of fragrance. The polar opposite to Black Opium Neon would be Oscar de la Renta Bella Blanca. This is very bridal, very sweet, feminine, sophisticated, soft. It reminds me a little bit of the Chanel Chanso Tendre. Mm. It's a really nice fruity floral. I don't really grab this very often either. I guess because I have so many fragrances that I tend to grab whatever is close and because it's been a while since I've worn this, I haven't grabbed it. 
We're now in the home stretch. I only have 11 more fragrances to share, if you can believe it, but they're all from the same brand. So now I'm going to be sharing my House of Siage fragrance collection, and all of these were sent to me complimentary. They've been incredibly generous, and I'm going to begin with their really fancy bottles. This is Passion de l'Amour, and I also have the traditional cupcake, so this is the original bottle, but then they have this really luxurious version, which is absolutely stunning. You have this lizard and flower detail, all the Swarovski crystals. I think this might be the most beautiful fragrance I have in my collection. All of the House of Siage bottles are the most beautiful in my collection. Now, Passion de l'Amour, the fragrance inside, is really beautiful. It's very sexy kind of fun, night out, dancing, cocktails. Could be girls night out, it could be a date night. It's also very long wearing and could be unisex, which is why they chose Passion de l'Amour to include in their Christian Cowan collaboration. It's the same fragrance, but they put it in one of the men's bottles. The next fancy fragrance I have to share is Tiara. This fragrance is so soft and beautiful, it's very elegant but the bottle is absolutely the star of the show. I love that blue. And then the last fancy bottle I have is Nuit et Moi. And this is so beautiful with the bow, the rhinestones and the black, it's very chic. It looks like a little gift. This is very spicy, very sexy. It's not really my type of fragrance, so I never wear this, but the bottle's so beautiful, have to display it. The very first fragrance that introduced me to House of Siage was Whispers of Truth. I love this bottle. It is very bridal, just a gorgeous fragrance. It almost smells like a fresh green version of Baccarat Rouge 540. Really nice. And then I also really love Whispers of Admiration. This is probably my second favorite. Just so happens it comes in the pink bottle, but it's very beautiful. One of my favorite cherry fragrances is House of Sia Chaveau d'Or. This is more of a fruity, floral, fruity rose. It's not really like a sexy, spicy rose, like Rose Prick, but it's very bright. It's really fun. It's just a beautiful springtime fragrance. And then Cherry Garden is another one of my all-time favorites from House of Siage. The dry down is a little bit powdery. It's very elegant. I think this is a rich lady fragrance. That's how it smells, very sophisticated. And I love the gold with the rhinestones. The cupcake is really beautiful. I wanted to end today's video with House of Siage because it ties in so nicely with the giveaway of the day. We are still doing 12 days of Christmas. The one lucky subscriber is going to win their very own Love is in the Air cupcake, as well as the Nuit et Moi travel set. All you have to do is subscribe with notifications, follow me on Instagram at TV, like and comment on this video, include your Instagram handle because that's how I will contact the winner. All of the giveaway details will be down below in the description box, so good luck to everybody who enters. And that completes today's video. We made it through my entire fragrance collection, everything except for ancillaries. I just counted 53 full-size bottles and then of course, nine little travel sprays and roller balls. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you guys. So I would love to hear about your fragrance collection. If you have any favorites or standouts that I mentioned today, let me know down below in the comments section. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.